That is awesome, man. I mean, it is fun. fun, fun. <laughs> I always know that I call Soprano. She's like my personal cheerleader. I can kind of heard it. Say, hey, you ever hear that? That's what, that's what she does. This is fun. I hope y'all had fun already because today is fun. And there's a bunch of different ways you can have fun at church. And we're doing this series on the farm. And I'm pumped because it's on the farm. And I grew up on the farm. And then, Growing up, I didn't like the farm, and I do now because my dad doesn't tell me what to do, so <laughs> I like it so much then. But now I kind of like it. Uh, but yesterday, well, it was actually happening the week before, last Saturday, uh, I ran into a problem. And I'm getting older. So I'm 35. And uh, wow. Wow. I, uh, see, the people who are older like me, I want to care. Well, here's the problem is that my hair is thinning out. So what happened to me last Saturday was that Nicholsville days and the sun was shining and I didn't think about my head because I don't like to wear hats. Some of y'all wear off the hats. I'm not a fan of hats. I just don't wear hats. So guess what I did last Saturday? I burnt my head. And uh, I told Amanda that night, I was like, my head is on fire. And she said, you have toast. It is burnt up. I thought, okay. So what am I going to do? So yesterday was working on the farm, and I thought, okay, I am not going to burn my head. And I said, oh my, what can I do? So I went in my closet, and here, here's what I got. Okay, I got a bunch of different stuff here. And uh, here's the traditional, you know, ball cap that you can wire. Some of you guys just sport the ball cap. I think this one is uh, Harley Davidson. Uh, you can sport the ball cap, and it covers your head, right? Yep. It does a good job. It'll, it'll, it'll. Covers your head nice, and I can be super slick, and I can hang out with all the cool dudes with wicked awesome beards and tattoos. And Harley Davidson, right? I can sport the leather chaps, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> all right. Now this one is a little bit cooler, okay? This is a little bit cooler. I call this the golf hat, all right? Uh, now that's pretty awesome, right? So uh, I can sport this. I, I actually, I like this hat. Uh, I actually wear this hat during the winter time sometimes. Uh, I actually like this hat, and it's, it covers my head pretty good, right? Okay, so this next hat, now this is pretty wicked awesome. This is my granddaddy's hat. This was, uh, this is a Stetson. Now, for some reason, I feel like when I wear this, I should be in a barber shop quartet. <laughs> bow tie, right? But it's still getting, it covers my head, right? Now, okay, now here's, here's what's awesome. Now, don't laugh. Here's my Amish hat, okay? <laughs> Now, some of y'all are going to laugh, and you already are. Uh, actually, this is authentic. I bought this, and we went up to Pennsylvania, and I uh, bought this off of a little kid for like five bucks, and it's, uh, it's an Amish hat. Now, uh, my sister has a picture of me uh, weed eating last year, and I will never do that again because it was really hot in July. They were up, and I was wearing this hat with no shirt, swimming trunks. Neon. <laughs> They were really bright orange, and uh, I was wearing work boots, and with this hat on, and I looked absolutely ridiculous. However, it still covers my head, right? It still covers my head, and it all serves the same purpose. But the problem is, is I don't like hats. Okay, there's my problem. So I come with another solution, okay, to protect my head, and uh, it's called sunscreen. <laughs> so yesterday, before I went outside to work, uh, I actually sprayed this in my head. And worked it in. I look like a grease monkey in here, but that's what I did. And it protected my head. And it, it got just a little bit red, but I didn't blister it all off. Now, what in the world does this have to do with church? It's the exact same thing, okay? Church is kind of like hats, okay? There's a bunch of different churches out there. And they all look a little bit different. And one is not necessarily right or wrong. Now, some of you all really like these different hats, okay? Now, some of y'all really like this hat, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty slick hat. You know, you could probably be a mobster or something with this. It's awesome, okay? Again, it, it's, it's a cool hat. I'm not sure really what you could do with this, but you can still wear it and it will cover your head, okay? And then you got, you know, your other hats. They're all hats, and they all serve the exact same purpose. And the purpose of the hat is to cover your head. Now, some of you wear them as stylish figures. Some of you wear them to cover up your messy hair. And some of you just like, man, I'm just going to go slack today. Most guys, they don't ever comb their hair. They'll just slap a hat on and go. And it's awesome. But it still covers the exact same purpose. And it's just like this with church. See, the, the purpose of the church is to elevate Jesus. Yeah. That, that's the purpose of the church. Now, it looks a little different to everybody. But most of us have an idea about what church is like, Right? We have an idea. So here, I want to start with this question, okay? 
When you think of the word church, what do you think of? What do you think of when you hear the word church? Before I believe or after I believe? <laughs> Let's say all together. Because here's why. And Tony said this in his presentation, opened up, you know, changing the way we think about church. I was not raised up in church like this. Uh, my dad was a pastor for years. As a matter of fact, I dislike church so much that I prayed nobody would show up so we wouldn't have to have church. Is that not sad? I remember being little and going up to my mom and said, maybe nobody will come and we can go home. And she said, let me tell you, mister, we're having church regardless if anybody shows up. <laughs> and we did. Uh, me and my brother and my mom and dad, we had, it, was, it was church. Uh, we did. I remember playing stick man in church. Or hangman. Tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe. I've done all these things in, in church. And so a lot of times when I think of church, those are the things that I think of. Okay? I think of, I think of the, the, the negative side or the, I'm going to say that the, the, the boring side. Because when you're a kid, there's not much you can find interesting about a guy getting up, sweating profusely, and using words that you have no idea what they mean. So we entertain ourselves with other, other things. So the first thing I think of the church, when I hear the word church, that's, what I, that's usually what I associate with. What do you associate church with? You know, what, what, is, what is the word church to you? For some of you, it's your great-great-granddaddy who was a preacher. You, you know, I ask people to go to church, and say, oh yeah, my great-granddaddy was a, was a preacher. Oh, well, that's great. Well, but what about you? Know, what about you? What, what about you? What about your relationship with God? What about your relationship with the church? So when you hear the word church, what do you think of? Now last week you saw a video, a my story video, of Payment John the Fence. Was that not awesome? Just to shout out. Awesome. Uh, I checked it last night. As of last night, this week, it has been viewed 76 times wow. on YouTube. It's absolutely incredible. Awesome. And we're using videos and all this stuff to do this one thing. Because we want to change the way you think about church. What changed the way you think about church? Now this started off as like a tagline and it's just completely and totally spun out of control because when we change the way we think about church, we change. Because see, growing up, I had two different lives. I had my church life on Sunday, but then I had my other life during the week. Can y'all do relate to that? I lived like one way in front of my parents and on church, but in front of all my other buddies, I was this whole other guy. I could transform into this guy and I could look awesome. And I could quickly transform into this guy. You ever done that? You run into the church guys, you're like, yes sir, I'm doing great. The Lord is good. And you're with this guy, like, hey, what's up dude? You're awesome, yeah, we're going to party, right? And you can just transform them right back and forth. What if all this stuff could turn into the same life? What if we could change the way we think about church to where it was all the same life? Yeah. See, there's this lady in the Bible and she had this exact same issue. And she talked to Jesus about it. And Jesus actually addressed this. Did you know this is actually in the Bible, what we're going to talk about today? Changing the way you think about church. It's in the Bible. And it's one of a part of our DNA as up to the church. It says, who we are. And it says, what we're doing. This is in John chapter 4. If you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 4. A lot of times when we think about church, we're thinking about the physical building. I can't tell you how many people have asked, you know, when are you going to get a, be a real church and have a building? What? <laughs> I actually had a preacher guy tell me, when are you all going to be a real church and get a, and get a building? And my response was, I thought the people were the church. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 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 Sometimes when we think of church, we think of the, uh, you know, the certain song books we may use. And some of them are green, some of them are red, some of them are white. We use the certain song books. Uh, sometimes when we think about church, we think about, did y'all ever go to church and you have what's called the Sunday school quarterlies? Mm -hmm. Sunday school quarterlies? We would, sometimes that's what, that's what we think of. Uh, one thing that I think is uh, about church is the awkwardness of the stand up, sit down. Stand up, sit down. Stand up and sit down. 
It's like a workout. I had not thought about that. We, and we associate with these things. And this lady in the Bible, she, she's talking to Jesus. And I want to kind of sum up some verses because it's long. I want to sum up John chapter 4, verses 1 through 18. They said, Jesus, they've been traveling and they were tired. And his disciples went to town to get something to eat. Jesus was tired, so he sat at this well called Jacob's Well. And while he sat there, this woman came up. And she is known as the woman at the well, or the Samaritan woman. She comes up to Jesus, and she didn't say a word. And Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, I love that. He calls her woman. Woman, give me something to drink. And she says, uh, Sir, you ain't got nothing to draw any water from, and the well's deep, so what do you want me to do? You ain't supposed to be talking to me. I'm a Samaritan woman. And they had this conversation. And Jesus was like, Yeah, but if you knew what I had to offer, you, you would ask me for water, and I would give you you know, eternal. You would never thirst again. I'd give you eternal water. She says, uh, Sir, can I have some of that? He said, Okay. Go get your husband. She said, sir, I have no husband. He said, you're right. You've had five husbands, and now you're shaking up with the guy, and he's not your husband. And she picks up with this verse right here. And sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. The only thing that he does is tell her that she's been married five times before. Five times. And now she's living with the guy. And she said, oh, well, sir, you must be a prophet. You know, you... You must be really sick because you told me this. And he said, so, I love this. So verse 20. And all she says to her past, and all she says to her life and her issue is, sir, you must be a prophet. Then she says this. Well, let me ask you this. Okay, that's what she's saying. So tell me, why is it, now listen, you're talking to Jesus now, okay? Jesus, the Son of God. And you're saying, tell me, why do you Jews does that not seem threatening to Jesus now? You tell me, why is it that you Jews, okay, you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim that it is in the, here in the Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worship? And guess what? This is over. It's over church. And here she's talking about Jesus, and she tells Jesus, okay, you told me about my past, and let me ask you this. Why do you Jews think that that's the only way you can worship down in Jerusalem? Why we think that you can worship her in the mountain. And this is question. It's not about her past. She doesn't say, can I get forgiveness of my sin? Or am I going to go to hell for living with the guy? None of that stuff. The first thing that she asked Jesus was about church. The first thing. You Jews say we need to worship down there. We think you can worship up here. Which way is it? And we have argued for worship for years. The church has. Years we've argued over worship. You know the first murder in the Bible was over church? You had Adam and Eve, right? They were the, the, our great mom and dad. And then they had two sons, Cain and Abel. And they presented a worship service. They had church and they both presented these sacrifices to God. Cain got a little jealous because God didn't like Cain's and he liked Abel. So Cain got upset at his brother and done what most brothers wanted to do, except he took a little further. He killed him. He killed him. All over church. Is that not in? Does anybody not see that that's odd? That it says unto Cain and his offering and his sacrifice, God didn't accept it. But he did Abel's. So Cain slew Abel. All over worship. Now we do need to take our worship very seriously. But don't go killing nobody when they don't worship the way you do. Now, she is saying, okay, which way is it? We do church a little bit different. We want to change the way you think about church. Is this okay? Is what we're doing, is it? I mean, I'm in jeans. I'm wearing Superman socks. I'm in a t-shirt. Is that, is that okay? Is, is, what you're, is this stuff okay? She's like, where do we worship? Do we worship in the mountain up here? Do we worship down here in the city? Where, where is it? I love this. This is, this is awesome, Okay. Where is it? Now look at verse 21. I love Jesus' response. He says, Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. I love this. Here's what he says. It don't matter. It don't matter whether you worship there or over here, but there's this one key thing that matters. He said that the time is coming. It's not there yet, but the, the time is coming. The time is coming. Well, why do you think Jesus would say the time is coming? He said, yeah, the time is coming. Look at this verse. This is Hebrews 10.1. It 
Here's why he said the time is coming, because the old system. I love this. The old system under the law of Moses was a shadow, a dim preview of good things to come. Not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year. But they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. Okay, now I'm going to sum up all those big words for you. Back in the old law, the, the old way, you didn't get prettied up to go to church. You had to go take up lamb chops, your sheep, and you would take him to the priest where you would slit his throat and kill him and then give him to the priest. And the priest would go and offer it as a sacrifice for your sins. How do you like church now? Because you would do this with bulls or goats or, or sheep. It was based upon your income. Sometimes you could even use pigeons. And you would take these animals and whenever you kill something, I know some of your, your deer hunters or fishermen, whenever you kill something and you cut it open, what comes out? Blood. Blood. It's nasty. I don't care. It's nasty. And it, it was a mess. Church was really messy back then. Really messy. And Jesus is saying, look, here's the, that old stuff, would, it never forgave you. But Jesus came to fulfill this. He came and He died. His blood was poured out so that we can be saved. And because we are saved, we can worship anytime we want to through the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's why, that's why He said the time is coming. Because it hadn't come yet. Because Jesus had not died yet. Isn't that cool? That now we can come together as up to church. We can worship in a townhouse. All because Jesus died 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And rose again. And now we can be worship. It's awesome. He said the time is coming. Now, let's dress this other part. So the time is coming. Now let's dress the other part. I love this because the time is coming. Go back to that other verse here today. The time is coming. But now, here, here's the question she had. Which way is it? Is your way right or is our way right? And Jesus said, I love this. It don't matter. Yeah. Is that not awesome? Now, this is a politician answer, isn't it? It don't matter. He didn't answer it, but he did. It don't matter. Either one. Either one's fine with me. The one thing that matters is that the time is coming. Now, what is the time coming for us? What is the time coming for us? We already said it's about Jesus, but when, where, how, why. Okay, I, I love this. Now, look at verse 22. So, the time is coming, and it don't really matter. Here's what matters. Okay, in verse 22, he says... I love this. Because she said, you Jews. And Jesus said, you Samaritans. I love that. You Samaritans. You know very little about the one you worship. While we Jews know all about him. Now, Jesus speaking with some arrogance here. But he can because he's the son of God and he can do that. So we, all, we know all about him. For salvation comes to the Jews. Now verse 23. But the time is coming. And indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. I love this. Verse 24, For God is spirit, so those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. I love this. Here's what it's all about. Here's what all of our churches need to be about right now. It's uplifting the name of Jesus because Jesus is spirit and in truth. And He said that right now, God the Father is looking for people He's looking for you and me and those out there who will worship Jesus through spirit and in truth. Now look at this. We say it's all about Jesus. I love this verse. This is John. I love this. John 14, verse 6. And here's what he says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can to the Father except through me. I love this. Jesus is truth. So I, it's not just an uplift church, but every church, they're all good. Every church around here is good. They may do things a little different. They may stand up and sit down. They may sing in choir robes. They may sing the worship videos. They may clap during the worship. They may not clap in the worship. But here's the thing. It don't matter. Here's what does matter. That Jesus is uplifted. That's all that matters is Jesus. Now, He's uplifted. That's it. We don't worship Granny. We don't worship the carpet. We don't worship our parking spots. We don't worship our clothes. We don't worship the song leader. We don't worship our hymns. We worship Jesus. Because that is what God is looking for. He's looking for Jesus worshipers. That's when we come in. That we worship Jesus. And that's why we get so excited and so passionate about why we worship. That's why we clap. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about my relationship. Can you tell I'm excited, okay? I'm a little excited because, guys, you just gave you life. I mean, what's not wicked awesome about that? What, what's not to get excited about? Right. 
if I'm on a roller coaster, I'm going to scream my lungs out. <laughs> but, oh, you're Jesus. No, you're sophisticated. <laughs> I want to see a sophisticated man ride a roller coaster that drops you at 180 miles an hour down the street dark cliff. I mean, right? <laughs> you're going to scream, right? I love riding roller coasters with my wife. She screams from the time she gets on her to the time she gets on her. <laughs> I mean, they're just going up there and baby, she's going, ah, and it starts. <laughs> Man, when you top over the hill, yeah! I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, my nephew, he laughs the entire time. He's just laughing. <laughs> the whole entire time. The thing about it is, you're on a roller coaster. You're on, however you express it, you're expressing the excitement. That is what God is wanting here. For us to express our excitement and worship Him through Jesus. No man come up to God except through Jesus. That's it. Yeah. That's the only way there is. Now, of course, I told you I'm so excited about this. I get excited about it because Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the life. Now, the woman responds. I love this. This is verse 25. So the woman responds. Love this. She said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Verse 26, and then he replied to her, I am the Messiah. What you're looking for? I mean, <laughs> is that the thought? You're looking for Jesus? You're looking for the Messiah? That's me. The I am the guy you're looking for. I am Jesus. I am the Messiah. I'm it. You want to know what you want to worship? It's me. I am the way. He's saying that. Worship God through Jesus. That's what it's about. And I, I absolutely love this. Now, there's a couple issues here. First of all, she's a female, okay? She's a female. It's all the men who do everything, right? Wrong. Our ladies are super important. I hope we showed it to you on Mother's Day. We love you guys, and you're awesome. We, we need you. Now, here's this Samaritan woman. She's an outcast, okay? Now, we know this because she comes to Jesus during the noon of the day. She went to that water pot, or the, the well, to fill up the water pot. She's an outcast. Most time the time, the ladies, they gossiped on the way there, and they would do it early in the morning. They'd go fill up the water for the day. She was an outcast. So she went when nobody else was there, but Jesus was there. And while he was there, she met Jesus. And while she met Jesus, she was introduced to the Messiah, the Son of God. And now she's saying, okay, I know that I'm going to be looking for this guy, okay? The other thing is that she's a Samaritan. They were outcasts too. They were considered unclean people. That you're not even allowed to touch them. They were that unclean. That unclean. Now, this conversation after this point, it suddenly gets interrupted. Now, I want you to understand she was an outcast, okay? She was an outcast. And this conversation gets interrupted. The disciples come back from getting food, and they interrupt. And look at this next verse. This is verse 28. She came in to get water, right? In a water pot. She left. The woman left her water jar beside the well and she ran back to the village telling everyone, I love this, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? Now listen to this. Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. She didn't even get this right. He didn't tell her everything she ever did. All he said was, you've been married five times and now you're living with somebody. That's all he told her. That wasn't the big deal. This next verse is the big deal. She said, could he possibly be the Messiah? This is verse 30. She went and she said, I think I found Jesus, guys. And in verse 30, I love it. So the people came streaming, streaming from the bills to see him. Have you seen the stream sitting on, you know, squirt bottles, whether it be 44 or 9 or whatever? You got stream and spray. Now, spray is good. It kind of missed everything really good. But guys like the string button because you can really put that liquid out there. It really comes out with some force, right? Now, we're going to try to wipe it up with just by string, but we're going to sit there and let the string do all the work, right? Because it comes out with force. These people came with a force, a streaming force to come and see Jesus because, get this, this woman was excited about meeting Jesus. She met Jesus, the Messiah, and she went to the building and said, Hey, guys, I found Jesus. And then they, she, they all ran back and said, yeah, we're going to sing for ourselves. I love this. Now, here's the question I want to ask you. Why did they come back? Here's a woman. She's been married five times. I'm assuming she only has a relationship with men. 
I'm assuming she doesn't have very many women friends. That's what I'm assuming because I've been married five times and now she's been with the guy. I'm assuming that most ladies would not like to be seen with this woman. If you don't want to hang out with that woman, you end up getting divorced. If you don't want to hang out with that woman, she's bad news. Bad news. I mean, would you hang out with that woman? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. She ran back. Why do you think the people came? Why, why did these guys, why are these people from this town, why did they come streaming in? Why do you think they came streaming in? I think because she was on fire. She was excited. Excited about what she had to tell and about what she had seen. Excited. She was so excited, they're like, huh, we might ought to check this out, right? Now, what happens? What happens when you go ride a roller coaster and you go and you find somebody, and you go tell them like, okay, we went to Dollywood, right? And they got this brand new roller coaster called something about the fire. And my one of our girls, she's 10 years old, she was telling everybody. And here's what she's saying. You gotta go ride it. You gotta go check that out. You gotta go ride it. It's awesome. It's like, okay, then I'll go ride it. You gotta go ride it. And so they would go around, they came back to Abby and said, you're right, it's wicked awesome. She's like, I told you, it's awesome. It's the exact same thing about Jesus. When we are excited, and we go tell other people like, you, you gotta go check out my church. It's awesome. We love Jesus. We scream, we, sh we, we holler, we shout, we clap. It's on video, we got YouTube. It's awesome. We got Facebook. The church is on Facebook. Yes, it's on Facebook. And they got these cool shirts, and you're excited because you're excited, and you're over here like, I'm excited too. Yeah, let's go. You ever seen excited? We're excited. I'm really excited this morning, okay? Yes, that's the reason why she came. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let's fix this another way. Hey, uh, we're doing something at church this weekend. Uh, you don't have anything planned, but you, uh, you want to come? What? You, you want to come to the church? I mean, you, you want to come? Where? Uh, to church. No. <laughs> I got to wash my hair or I got to do, do something else. Do you see the difference here? If somebody comes and invites me something and they're not excited about it, there is no way I'm going to check it out. But when we are on fire and excited about it, it gets excited, right? That's why they came. She was excited and she could not wait to get it out. What happens when your kids you score football touchdowns and you're like, you got to come and check out. They're awesome. They're scoring every single time. What happens when our local sports teams and we start winning every game? It's like, you got to come and check it out. They're awesome. And everybody pours in. God, it's the exact same way with Jesus in church. This is why we want to change the way you think about church. We want to go from the, uh, do you want to come to, do you want to come and check it out? we got the whole people here. Warrior thing last week just kind of really threw me <laughs> and then I saw the video and I was like, uh, uh, you got love Tommy, right? <laughs> okay, so these people that came pouring in. Now it was the excitement of the woman that got them there. I don't want you to miss that. It was her excitement that got them there. Now look at verse 39. Uh, verse 39. The woman got them there. Many Samaritans. Spiritual outcasts. I want you to ever, ever say outcast. Outcasts. They were all outcasts. Now the outcast, that means that they were sinner people. Unclean, you couldn't touch them. They had a bad history, a bad rap. They were the worst of the worst. But these bad people, people who did not have a relationship with God, these people who did not have a relationship with Jesus, is the one the, who the woman went to go get. And they came. So many Samaritans from the village, they believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. It was her excitement that got them there. We have got, we've got people all around us that, that don't like God, that, that don't understand God, that don't like church, that they've got the whole hangman mentality or the, man, I, I just don't, I just don't. They, and they're, they're sitting at home while we're here rocking it on with God and it's awesome because she was excited they came because of her excitement. And now they're believing. I, I love this. 
Now look at verse 42. So she got up there, but look at verse 42. Jesus began to teach them, and they stayed for a few days teaching verse 42. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard Him ourselves. Now we know that He is indeed the Savior of the world. It was her excitement that got them there. But when they got there, guess who they met? Jesus. See, it's not, it's not about the way that we do things. It's about the one that we're uplifting, okay? If we quit uplifting Jesus, then we might as well just go home because we're not going to accomplish anything. But as long as we're uplifting Jesus, we're going to accomplish a whole lot because it's Jesus that changes life. It's Jesus that saves people. It is Jesus that makes us brand new. You got issues? Great, we all do. Jesus can take care of those because it's all about Jesus. So when people come and they're hearing about Jesus, their lives are getting changed. Their lives are being transformed. Do you know that now, instead of me having PJ on Sunday and PJ through the week, now I'm the same guy. Yeah. When you see me through the week, I, I, I'm exactly the way I'm right now. When you see me at home with my family, I'm the exact same way. Now, sometimes I get aggravated. Sometimes I hit my thumb with a hammer, and I don't like those situations. They're just not pleasant. But I'm the same. The same guy. Trust us. It's always like this. I'm the same guy. And here's why. Because I finally learned that it's all about Jesus. You know? It's all about Jesus. Everything about it. It's not about the cars. It's not about our money. It's not how clean your car is or how clean your house is. It's about Jesus. Guess what uplift church is about? Jesus. Jesus. Guess what our lives need to reflect? It's, God, it's Jesus. That is what we're passionate about. Now, we're using uplift church as a catalyst to uplift Jesus. Okay? And I hope that you are super excited and super puffed. You can leave here today and like, man, that is awesome. I love it. Why do you love your church? Because we have a unique way of worshiping Jesus. Great. It's about Jesus. If God can bless the ultimate warrior to reach somebody's lives, how much more can God use all of us to reach somebody for Jesus? Because it's all about Jesus. That's just what it's all about. That's what it's all about in this story. Now, we're coming to a closer, and I want to ask you this. Back to this question. What do you think about church? What do you think about church? See, there's some Sundays that uh, some of uh, my uh, preacher friends are like, man, what happened at up here today? My Facebook is blowing up. I'm like, they're excited about church. I'm like, how do you, how do you get people so excited about it? I'm like, I don't know. I'm excited, and I guess it kind of spreads. It's, I don't know. It, it's awesome. We're just, we're just uplifting Jesus. That's it. What do you think about church? Limitless. Maybe you like church. Maybe it is limitless. Maybe, maybe, maybe your whole idea of church is like, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. What, what is the idea about church? Maybe it is about a building to you, or maybe it is about a certain way. Or maybe you've got this older, maybe the tradition part that's just ingrained in you, and you just can't let go. You're like, man. I like up it, but it's just a little out of my element. Let me tell you out of your element. For several months, a long months, you know where we worshiped at? In my basement. In my basement. You can't worship Jesus in a basement. Oh, really? Because I thought we just said it's all about Jesus. If we not just say that, guys, it don't matter. We can transform the Nicholsville townhouse to a place of worship. We can transform a school. It don't matter where we're at as long as Jesus is the main thing. Yeah. Jesus is the main thing. This woman, God used Jesus to change the way she thought about church. To her, it was all about worshiping the mountain. All oh, like our church, we're worshiping the mountains. It's all about, that's what we're doing. It's all about Jesus, but we're worshiping the mountains. But the Jewish right here, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't doing that right. You, you can't do that. You, you can't, you can't do that. You can't worship up in the mountains. Really? Because it's all about Jesus. That's why we change the way that we think about church. Because most people who are not here right now, they've got a preconceived idea, a preconceived notion of what church is about. And what we want to do, we want to change that. We want to get those things out of your mind because we believe that God can use the internet to reach people. We believe that He can use excitement. He can use plain clothes. He can use Ultra Warrior. He can use Superman socks. He can use Wicked Awesome socks. He can use your hair fixed up. He can use a dress down. He can use you wearing a dress. He can use you wearing a tie. He can use you wearing shorts. Who cares? It's all about Jesus. That's it, guys. It's all about Jesus. So you know what I'm excited about? Because I've learned that church is not something on Sunday. 
It's about Jesus all the time. Yes. It's about Jesus all the time. Now, I'm not some sort of little Jesus freak that's going around here and saying, Jesus, Jesus. I don't, I don't. I mean, <laughs> when you order your food at Pals, you know, I don't, I don't order food and say, Bless you, Jesus. I mean, we don't. I don't, I say thank you, you know. So, I want you to understand when I say it's all about Jesus, it's not like a little. We're not freaks, okay? <coughs> now you're laughing at me, but. I want you to understand that we're not. We're not little freaks. We're not freaks. Here's the, guys, I am madly. I have madly fallen in love with Jesus. If you can't tell, that's what I'm excited about. Because He died for me when I was unbelievable. He died for me when I was incredibly wicked. And still yet, He loved me enough to die for me. Now, is that not wicked awesome? That He would love you so much and say, I want to die for Him. I want to die for Him. Guys, that makes me feel like gooey inside because it's all about Jesus. And He loves me that much. When you think about church, here's what I think about now. I don't think about the pews anymore. I don't think about the parking spots. I don't think about the style. I don't think about the hymnals. Here's what I think about. Jesus. Jesus. And we're trying things in a different way to try to change the way you think about church for this one thing. Because it's not about all the stuff. It's not about the physical things. Here's what it's all about. Jesus. Yes, that's what it's all about. It's Jesus. And when we can focus and uplift Jesus, it will change your life. Your church life is going to start being fun now. Your home life is going to reflect your church life. Many of you, we put masks on on Sundays and we pretend like everything's okay. Well, we're not okay. But we believe that it's okay not to be okay. But it's not okay to shortchange Jesus. We're going to make sure that it's all about Jesus. Some of you have a hard time getting past it. Like, but man, the, the building, like, yeah, we, we don't have a building. We have a trailer. And uh, the trailer has the nickname, the Greater Trailer. And it's all because I mistyped on a text message I sent out to our, our core people. And uh, I usually put in Greater Things and I put Greater Trailer. <laughs> Don't you hate autocorrect? <laughs> it's crazy. Autocorrect will get you in trouble. <laughs> it will get you in trouble. We will get in trouble. We will not have the blessing of God if we make church about anything other than Jesus. Now I know this is nothing new to you, but we sometimes we take ownership in buildings. Have you ever sat in somebody's seat at church and you're like, man, I felt their eyes burning through the back of my head. <laughs> and it was it was rough. I've been asked if we can move. Have you seen how large my family is? You want us to move seats? <laughs> because we can make church about many different things other than what it's really intended to be all about. Sometimes we get so excited about our name. Uplift, it's a name. You know that for several months we didn't even meet? Uh, we, we didn't even have a name. Uh, we just met for church in my basement and we didn't even have a name. Last week I brought... Uh, Garrett up on the stage and uh, he shows me an example. I show the uh, he that's that's his main role. You'll see him out in the parking lot from 10 to 10 30 rocking out with Tony. 10 30 hits, he's he's back behind the stage and he's doing nothing but praying for during the entire worship service. He, he's doing nothing but praying. Uh, Super Dave, go and come up here. I want to introduce to you uh, Super Dave. Y'all give him a hand. Super Dave. Uh, Super Dave is a uh, one of my right-hand men. And uh, Super Dave is the uh, executive pastor of, of the church. Now, what he does is he takes care of a lot of the business stuff. Because in case you haven't noticed, I'm a little busy with family. I'm going to school. i got a job. Plus, to do this. So he takes care of all the business uh, side of church. Y'all show me you appreciate him. All right. uh, now, I've told you for months that we didn't even have a name for uh, Uplift. We just met together. And uh, what we done was we had, after church, we would 
usually have a little break and we would eat just a little something and then we'd meet for about an hour. And we were starting to plan how, how we can do church. How can we reach people that nobody's reaching? And during these months, we were trying to come up with a name. A, a name for uplift. A name that would be awesome and that God could use and that He could bless. And I've got a, a whiteboard in my living room. And we had scribbled down a whole bunch of different names. And uh, Super Dave is the one who came up with the name Uplift. And I just want him to share with you a little bit about how he came up with his name. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not a speaker like PJ is, but I'll try to make this short and sweet. Like I said, we met for months and months trying to come up with things like the name. And when PJ has said in the past that everything that we've done at Uplift has been really preyed upon, uh, you know, and not included the name too. We didn't just arbitrarily pick a name. And we met, and I've actually got these little cards when we were picking names. It's got, you know, what's in a name. And basically it says you want to distinguish yourself. Uh, you know, you want to create an image of your, your organization that will be remembered. You know, and there's a few other things in here. And, you know, everyone, you know, was, you know, coming up with their suggestions and everything. And what I was doing during these months that we were trying to come up with a name, I would actually even pray over what the name should be. And I actually came across three verses in the Bible that actually really spoke to me. And if you'll go ahead and advance. The first one was actually uh, Ephesians 4.29. And it basically says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may, be it may benefit those who listen. Okay, it's talking about building people up, lifting them up. Uh, the next verse was Psalm 61 2. And it's from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In other words, lifting up. Okay, the third verse. He lifted me up out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire, and he set, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. And that's Psalms 42. And like I said, those three verses really stuck out in my head. And it just, you know, lifting up and uplift. And that's where uplift came out of. Ain't that awesome? Uh -huh. Uplift came out of it. What we did was, we're like, well, how are we going to pick? We had a bunch of different names. And I showed him a picture earlier. We had all these names listed out. And at one of our core meetings, we actually... Uh, Voted. Everybody voted. And at the end, after everybody left, I tallied them all up and the uh, uplift got it. And uh, we've been uplift ever since. And that was uh, at the beginning of, at the end of August of 2012. That's when that was. August 2012 was when uplift got a name. And then it was months later before we had a logo and uh, how God used everything else. So it's an amazing story. Thank you, Sir, for sharing that with us. During this series, well, I'm going to keep introducing people to you because you're going to see them kind of what their roles and things are. And now you know we even got the name Uplift. And he said one thing that we did, that was that everything that we do, we, I mean, we pray over. Uh, we pray over everything. All the electronic stuff that we've got, we have anointed them with oil, and we, we prayed over absolutely everything. But we come back to this one thing. This whole series on the farm is all about this one thing. It's about church. And today... We want to change the way that you think about church. And some of you here, you're like, man, but I, I am all in. That's great. But what I wanted to do today was give you the why behind it. Why do we want to change the way you think about church? And here's the why. Because it's not about the building. It's not about your history. It's not about where you were 20 minutes ago, or where you were last night, or where you were in your walk with God 15 years ago. Church is about Jesus. About uplifting the name of Jesus. Worshiping Jesus. Jesus. For some of you, this is a hurdle that you need to get over. And you know what? If he can, if he can forgive, if he can talk to a Samaritan woman, then he can talk to me. He can forgive me. So you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Others of you, you are stuck in that tradition mode. And you're like, but it's got to be done this way and this way and this way and this way. And Jesus told that woman, like, listen, it don't matter. I'm what matters. 
It's about Jesus. I'm not sure where you are right now in your ideal church. We do things a little different here today. We did things a little bit different last week. We're going to continue to do things a little different. I kind of have to say that we want to think not just outside the box, but on top of it, to the sides of it, in and out, all the way around it. We want to make sure that God is at the helm of it all. And He will. As long as we're making it about Jesus. What are you making it about right now? Maybe your idea of church has already been changed. Then great. Are you excited about it where you can go and share with others? Because when you leave here today, you're going to have the opportunity to get some invite cards. We invite people to come down to our next worship experience at Gate City. It's going to happen at the end of the month, and it is going to be unbelievable. Maybe some of you, you need to be excited about your relationship with Jesus because we've got a whole room full of kids that's going to go home with you, and are you excited about it? Others, you need to experience God's love right now. But he says, let me forgive you. It doesn't matter if you've been married five times or what you've experimented with. I can give you hope and life. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. And this right now, this is your time between you and God. My question to you is, what is God telling you right now? For some of you, it is that change in the way you think about church. If that's, you've been thinking things about one way, and now God's saying, you know what, I want to take all that off the table, and I want you to make it about me. I want to be the Lord of your church life. I want to be the Lord of your life. So I'm talking to you, all of you, those this morning, I'm talking to you right now, those who've already professed Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to those who are already born again Christians, those who have already professed Jesus. Right now, He's wanting to be the Lord of your life. He's wanting to be the Lord of your church life. He's wanting to be the Lord of your home. So I'm talking to all you, all you those right now, says, you know what? I am saved, but I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Church is all about Jesus. I need my life to reflect that as well so I can share it and tell it with everybody else. Today, if that's Jesus, He's speaking to you right now and says, I want to be the Lord of your life. Will you let me be the Lord of your life? I am the one who is it about. I am Jesus. I am the Messiah. Let me be the Lord of your life. Worship me. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody's looking around. I want to have the opportunity to pray for you as you make this commitment. Say, yes, Jesus. I want to make my life all about you. Hands are already going to Just stick your hands up. Yes, I want to make you the Lord of my life. My church life, my home life, my work life, I want to make it about you. Just keep your hands up just for me. I want to pray for you. Father God, you are absolutely incredible. And today you have changed the way that we think about church, just like you did with this Samaritan woman. And today we are recognizing that we are making a commitment to you that we want to reflect our life let it reflect you, Jesus. Because it's all about you. You see these hands raised up, God? May our lives reflect you. May our church life and our home life may be the same life. May we treat our wives at home the same way we do here at church. May we treat our kids and our husbands the same way we do here at church as we do at home. May we be the same person we are here today, God, as we are when we go to work this week. I pray today, God, as we make these commitments to you, that we would be excited and passionate about Jesus because it's all about you. You can put your hands down. Others of you, today is the day that you need to make a commitment. You know what? I need to give my life to Jesus. The Samaritan woman, she'd been looking and looking for the right thing. She was looking for the Messiah. He just wasn't there yet. But she met Jesus. Today is Jesus there ready to meet you. Is he knocking at you and saying, I am the Messiah. I am Jesus, the one you're looking for. Maybe you've been looking for so many different things and Jesus is saying, right now, it's me. It's all about me. This day, you know who you are. He's speaking to you right now. You know exactly who you are. If that's you today, he says, yes, I need to make Jesus. I, I need to be saved. I need to accept Him as my sacrifice for my sins. I know that. And He's speaking to me right now. If that's you right now, I'm going to ask you to pray. Right now, would you, would you call out to God and say, Lord Jesus, save me. Make me brand new. Fill me up, God, with life. Take my life. And make me brand new. I accept Jesus as my Savior. Thank you for new life. Now you have mine. If you just prayed that prayer, then you now belong to Him. Your life is dramatically changed. From this day forward, you're living for Jesus. As you make room for Him and open up your heart to Him, He's going to keep showing you things and He's going to continue to make you brand new. 
Hands are still bowed and eyes are closed. If you just prayed that prayer today, I want to pray for you. You just sit in your hands and say, I just prayed that prayer today. Thank you, God. See your hands. Thank you. Father God, you're incredibly awesome. I pray today, God, that you would do something incredible in our lives. You are changing the way we think about church. It's not because of us. It's all about Jesus. So help us to be that excited and that passionate about Jesus. Because that is what's going to change lives. Thank you for the change lives here today, God. And I pray today will be a day that we never forget. June 1st of 2014. When we have worshipped you in spirit and in truth. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.